What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look specifically at voiceovers inside Premiere Pro. So either if you have a really good audio and you want to make it more clear and really pop, or maybe you have some type of zoom or stream yard, stream like low poor quality audio and you're looking at ways to help clean it up a little bit, I'm gonna show you four different effects I use all the time inside Premiere Pro that I really use whether to make audio more clearer or to make it pop or just make poor audio and make it sound better. And whichever situation you're in, I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of. And if you stick to the very end, I'm gonna show you guys a pretty cool thing if you're using, you know, if you're in a project where you have a, like an hour's worth of audio to add it to the whole entire track. That way you don't have to copy and paste different effects to all the clips. So be sure to stick to the very end to see that trick. And before we get started, as always, feel free to hit the like button. It really helps my channel out. And with that, let's get started in this tutorial. So I'm inside Premiere Pro here and in the project panel, I have an audio clip that we'll be using for this example. So I'm going to drag this out into the timeline panel to create a new sequence. We're going to expand the audio one track. And this clip is just a random clip. Actually, I just recorded for my podcast link down in the video description. If you want to check it out, it's a pretty good show interview, different video people feel free to check it out, but I'm going to be using this as an example. So it's basically just me talking and it's like a 30 minute or 30 minute audio clip. So we're going to take a look at how to use these effects for this specific clip. So if we zoom in here, what's going on everyone? It's weird to hear your own voice. All right. So the first effect we're going to talk about is parametric equalizer. So to search for the effect, what we're going to do is go into our effects panel and you can search for parametric equalizer. And what this effect is, is, is basically a really good equalizer. If you know anything about audio, an equalizer showcases the frequencies of the audio. So if we play this, Back to the post -show podcast. I'm your host, John, the video guy. you'll notice that here is the audio displayed in frequencies. So frequencies is just uh, how audio is measured. And basically humans can hear between 20 and I think it's 20,000 Hertz. Uh, when it comes to frequencies. So you'll notice the right side is the highs and basically the left side is the lows to keep things simple. You know, the highs, the, hiss the hissings are going to be to the right. And then if something's like r low rumble, you know, noises is to the left. And what you can do here is really off the bat, you want to focus on the EQ first. You want to gauge whether you have good quality audio or poor quality audio using equalizer and just seeing this graph, you can really understand right off the bat where, what you're working from. So, you know, in this example here, you can see that there's a lot of lows, you know, between the hundred to around the 400 mark and the highs are a little low. Welcome back everyone. And today so right off the bat, what we can do to really make this in this specific example, the audio pop a little bit more is raise the highs. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. So using these five different little dots here, you'll see them. You can, what you can do is just drag this and pull it up. And this will basically drag the highs and make them more louder. You don't want to go too far, but like say for this example here, And that basically just boosts the highs a little bit. And then down below, you can adjust the width and the gain. The gain is essentially just up and down. But if you go to Q, the frequency width, you can kind of make this, you know, more wider. That way, kind of like the general highs are being lifted. Welcome back, everyone. And in today's podcast episode... You might not be able to hear the difference since I'm just playing this through the MacBook speakers that I have, but I can definitely tell the difference. So feel free to mess with that. Depending on your type of audio, you're going to have to see which frequencies you want to boost, uh, which ones are not there, and just kind of play and mess with it to kind of get it to a nice audio level for your own personal needs. The other thing that I want to show you guys is also you can surf audio and kind of see 
uh, especially when it comes to voiceovers and dialogue specifically, everyone kind of has like a nice sweet point in their voice. So what you can do is, you know, specific to the person that you're EQing here, you can kind of see what type of frequency that person really sounds nice in. So to do that here, say I really want to bring out, you know, uh, the, the lows in my voice, I can raise this and using the Q width, I can narrow this down to really fine tune, uh, to really get it narrow, to really fine tune where I sound the best at. So I'll show you how to use this. So if I play this audio back, what I'm searching for, I'm gonna kinda hover here, click and hover here, to kinda see and hear what sounds best. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Post Show Podcast. I'm your host, John the Video Guy. Welcome back everyone, and in today's so from that example, I can tell in around the 200 range, I kind of have the sweet spot. So I want to boost uh, the areas and the frequency that sound best. So for me personally, in my voice, 200 hertz is kind of the sweet point. Now others, if you notice when I went up to 300, 400 didn't sound that good, and 100 didn't really sound that good either. Now each person's voice is gonna sound different, so this really comes down to EQing specific people. And everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Some people might be good at 100, other people might be better at 300, 400. So it really comes down to that. Feel free to do what I just did and kind of find the sweet spot. So in this example here, 200's good, so I'll bring it back down a little bit. And what I'll do is kinda of uh, kind of uh, widen the uh, width of a little bit so that area in my audio is just boosted ever so slightly. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Post Show Podcast. I'm your host, John the Video Guy. So you can see as I turned it off and on there, you can really tell the difference. Hopefully, I'm not sure how well you can hear it, but if you are working with this on your own time, in your own personal project, you should see the difference right away. So by using this first effect, it's really dynamic. Leading into the second effect is gonna be dynamics. Wow, I didn't plan that. But yeah, the parametric equalizer is a really good way to really boost um, your EQs and find the frequencies and bring the best frequencies out. But yeah, as I said, the second effect I'm gonna go over is dynamics. So for dynamics, what you can do is clear this in your effects panel. Search for dynamics and then drag it out to your clip. And what Dynamics is, if we hit the Edit button, I'll just kind of show you what we have here. So in this effect, you get a compressor and a limiter is what we'll be focusing on. We won't be changing the auto gate or the expander. What this effect's best for is for compressing the audio and uh, using the limiter to limit the audio output. So what is this good for? The, com the compressor is really good for uh, audio files that have a very low lows and high highs. So the difference in the audio fall off, if you look here, we'll go back to the timeline. If we're focusing on this guy. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Post Show Podcast. I'm your host, John the Video Guy. So you can see the lows are kind of like dipping to negative 24 and then the highs are kind of in between negative 12 and negative 6. And what using a compressor does, it kind of compresses the low lows and the high highs and makes it more, uh, kind of scrunches them together, I would say. And if we look back here at the effect and we go to edit, the ratio is by how much that's being compressed by. So if we change the ratio to say two or three, three is even more, basically two is like this and then three is like this. So basically by changing the ratio, you can change the amount that you're actually compressing the audio file. So this is, like I said, this is very helpful if you have someone that's really low and then all of a sudden their highs are really high. It just kind of brings the lows up and brings the highs down to kind of make it more even over time. And this is really helpful if you have a very long audio clip and you want everything to be kind of equalized or compressed over time, instead of trying to manually adjust the audio levels over time, this saves you a lot of time. I said time a lot in there. But yeah, it does save you a lot of time. So let's check the box here. For this example, I'm gonna use three to show you really the difference here. And then what you'll wanna do is make sure the makeup is turned up a little bit. 
I always like if the ratio is three, makeup for me is usually good at nine decibels. And if it's two, usually the makeup is set six decibels. And then for the limiter, you can check this. And a good threshold to keep it at is negative six. That way nothing passes negative six and your audio is broadcast safe. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Post Show Podcast. I'm your host, John the Video Guy. So right off the bat, you can see it's a lot louder now. Things are uh, peaking at negative six and the fall off is like between negative 18 and negative 12. So everything is really in line. It's really consistent. The lows are higher and the highs are cut off at negative six and it's all sounding really nice. Now a disclaimer here, this isn't gonna work well if you're using like Zoom footage or some type of StreamYard recording or you, where you're recording audio just from your MacBook or you know you have poor quality audio to say the least uh, this effect might actually make it worse so you know because that audio might already be heavily compressed so obviously you don't want to use this effect if you're working with audio that is already highly compressed all right so that is dynamics the third effect that we'll search for is called de reverb and these last two effects I'm going to be covering are more for poor audio quality so, you know, if you have an echoey type of audio clip or if you have clips that have a lot of noise, these next two effects are gonna really help you. So I'm gonna search for D-Reverb and we'll drag this out here. And we'll click edit and we'll Welcome see what we have. So right now off the bat, it's set to 40 and this processing focus is on all the frequencies. And what you can do is change this to like, you know, focus on the mids, the highs, exclude the mids, focus on the lows. And this really comes down to your own audio. What I really love to do is just do the mids because that's really where everything really is. And that's the mid frequencies are kind of like more of the troublesome frequencies I find most of the time. And usually when I focus on the mids and I adjust the D-reverb, it comes out really nice. So for this example, we'll do this. And usually you'll want to be somewhere probably between 20 to 50%, I would say in the amount most cases. If you're working with a lot of really bad audio, probably 50 to 60 percent is going to be your uh, go-to. But for 30, this is probably going to sound pretty okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Post Show Podcast. I'm your host, John the Video Guy. Welcome back, everyone. So you can see it kind of took off the echo and the reverb. It, you know, this effect is really good if you're in a large room or if you have a lot of echo you hear after uh, the speaking part, parts. So feel free to mess with this effect. I wouldn't go too crazy because if you bring it up all the way, the voice isn't going to get as clear um, or it's going to lose its clarity and it's going to sound a little bit muddy. So, but this is a really good way to uh, decrease the echo and the reverb of audio files. And the last effect I wanted to cover that I use all the time is called denoise. And this is a classic go-to if you have noisy audio. Uh, when you click edit, the same thing when it comes to processing focus, I usually do the mids and I drop it down usually somewhere between eight to 16. Um, and today's podcast episode, Gonna be pretty cool I'm gonna be going now obviously I have really clean audio right out of the gate so really for me I probably wouldn't use de reverb or denoise in this example but if like I said earlier if you have poor quality audio you want to lean into de reverb and denoise and what's cool about denoise is you can actually preview what you're taking out here by checking this box I can't hear it but you know you'll hear it if you're if you have headphones on and whatnot but you can actually preview what you're actually taking out, which is really nice. Just be sure to uncheck that box. Um, you know, otherwise, if you export it with the checkbox on, that wouldn't be good. So uh, that is denoise, and the order is actually important here. You'll want to go in this order. If you notice, if you drag these around a little bit, say if you put de reverb before parametric equalizer, and maybe denoise before parametric equalizer. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. It's going to sound different because it's adding D reverb first, dynamics, then denoise, and then parametric equalizer. So, for example, these added frequencies aren't getting denoise or D reverb. So, you know, you'll have to mess with the order to see what sounds best. For me, what has worked out best for me is adding what I did in the order of this tutorial is parametric equalizer, dynamics, 
then the reverb, then the noise. But feel free to mess with it. You know, everyone's audio is gonna be different. But for me, in most cases, that's the order that I add the effects for audio. All right, so if you stuck to the very end, as I said, I would promise you to show you if you are working on several, uh, say a very long project and you just want to add it to the whole track. You know, you can do, do the same thing that I showed you in adding effects, but what you'll want to do is go to Window and go to Audio Track Mixer. And if you hit the drop down here, what you can do and what you see is the different audio tracks listed here and you can choose effects. So similar to how you would get it down in the effects panel, what you can do is go into filter and EQ, add parametric equalizer. And what this is, if you double click on it, you'll see exactly what we saw earlier for the cl specific clip, but instead this is for the whole track. So, you know, any clips on audio track one is gonna have this effect on it. And as, you know, same thing before, you can make changes and it will be added to the track. So this is a really good way to add the same effects, but for the whole track instead of individual clips. That way, if you have several clips on the same track, all of the clips on that track get the same effects. And not only that, but if you make changes to the effects over time, they'll update on the, all the clips because any clips in that track will get that uh, affected uh, or adjusted effect. So yeah, that's a good time saving, you know, effect way to work with audio. Now obviously this comes with some caveats because you know if you have 50 different speakers on one timeline then you, you don't want to have 50 different audio tracks. Maybe you do but that's going to be crazy. So I highly uh, suggest using nested sequences or you know limiting how many audio tracks you have in a certain sequence. If you have a lot of speakers you know find the best workflow that works for you but it can be kind of um, tricky if you have a lot of different you know, people speaking in the same sequence. So just keep that in mind. All right guys, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new in audio today. If you wanna learn more about Premiere Pro, I actually put together a playlist. I'll link it right up here. Feel free to go check it out. I have some other audio tutorials on there as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.